This month, Netflix released a series called Unwell, an episodic documentary series that focuses on the more unusual aspects of the wellness industry. The first episode is all about essential oils, and features two of the largest MLM companies out there, doTERRA and Young Living. Those companies and their reps have some thoughts. Hello everybody, my name is Emma. Today we are going to be talking about doTERRA's response to the essential oils episode of Unwell. So this documentary has gotten a surprisingly negative response from people who peddle the MLMs featured in it. They're saying things like, don't watch it, documentaries can say whatever they want, I've seen that somewhere. While I respect and agree with the notion that we should remember to treat entertainment media as such, and remember while we're consuming media that everything is presented with some level of bias. I don't think that's the point they're trying to make. I say surprising feedback because I thought the episode was very considered and it went relatively easy on the companies it featured, without being entirely one-sided in their favour, which I guess is what these companies would have preferred. The entire first chunk of the episode is given to explaining the benefits of essential oils, with a lot of screen time given to properly trained and qualified professionals talking about how when used responsibly, essential oils can help with relaxation and even by extension pain management. Throughout the episode we follow several people whose lives have been improved by using essential oils. However, this episode features a doTERRA representative behaving incredibly irresponsibly, and so the doTERRA reps are essentially blaming the documentary for highlighting this woman's actions, which are indicative of a bigger problem within doTERRA. Believe me, she is not the only one. To me this all highlights that they're placing way more importance on how the company looks and how that impacts sales rather than actually genuinely caring about sharing the benefits of essential oils because the episode does that perfectly fine. Now I absolutely agree with everything the aromatherapy professionals in this episode said about the potential benefits of essential oils. I don't think there's anything wrong with using or recommending essential oils as a way to manage stress or anxiety. I myself burn incense and while I have zero belief in any mystical properties there, I enjoy the smell and more importantly I associate the ritual of burning incense with my time to physically relax. And so that does relieve some symptoms that I might experience before trying to go to sleep, for example. Note, relieve symptoms. Where essential oils become dangerous is when people claim they have the power to cure certain conditions and advocate for their use as an alternative to seeking professional medical advice. It's also potentially extremely dangerous to ingest oils, and there are dangers regarding using certain oils around children and pets. Very small amounts can be extremely potent when ingested, and having too much of even the purportedly safer oils can cause damage to your stomach, your mouth, they can cause nerve pain and numbness. Sources in the description, by the way, as always. As pointed out by Amy Gelper, an aromatherapist and co-founder of the New York Institute of Aromatic Studies, love that title, the whole purpose of distilling the aromatic components from plants was because we wanted to capture their smell. Essential oils are for smelling. There's no reason to ingest them and you risk your health by doing so. The other problem with doTERRA and Young Living, of course, is that they are both multi-level marketing companies, which as we all know, are, in my opinion, principally unethical, potentially financially dangerous, and they breed very toxic behaviours. I've not done a deep dive into either Young Living or doTERRA, but preliminary research suggests they meet my usual red flag criteria. They encourage recruitment, the income disclosure statements show a very poor showing for most reps, and plenty of reps engage in dangerous business practices, such as the one featured in this Netflix documentary episode. So in case you haven't seen it or you're not fully up to speed, I am going to quickly go through the doTERRA rep's appearance on this Netflix episode and show some clips and explain what's going on before I go through doTERRA's official response so that it makes sense and so that my response to the response also makes sense. So this episode of Unwell features a doTERRA rep called Alison. Now she seems like a nice person and probably not intentionally misleading anyone, just genuinely very misguided and wildly irresponsible. In any normal job, a manager would have reprimanded her for this behaviour long ago and it either would have been corrected or she would have been fired. But that doesn't happen very often in MLMs unless you're not making your upline much money. My paychecks now are over $20,000 every single month. Which is clearly not a problem for Alison because she has a huge downline. My doTERRA team is over 16,000 people right now. Alison not only ingests oils herself, but she also recommends ingesting oils to others who attend these doTERRA teaching sessions that she hosts. It's basically any MLM sales pitch. She comes around with some products, she explains what they do and what they're for, except that while she's explaining what they're for, she's uh, breaking the law. <laughs> I highlight the fact that these are like teaching training sessions because people are presumably signing up to these thinking that she is a fully qualified professional and when she hosts one of these parties introducing people to the oils she serves them oily water. 
These are three of my favorite oils that I love to put in butter. Lemon, lime, orange. Couple of questions as an aside for people who ingest oils. One, I'm pretty sure oil doesn't dissolve in water, so how does that work? Two, why would one use lemon, orange, and lime oils when lemons, oranges, and limes exist? We're always banging on about how natural the oils are, but surely you don't get much more natural than using real fruit. She talks to this group of ladies about the fact that they're most likely there because they're suffering from some sort of medical issue. So we're immediately taking the role of a medical professional or a person who is providing an alternative solution to medical issues. This is so dangerous because apparently we go to MLM salespeople's living rooms for our medical problems now instead of our GP and she has this whole story about how she was ill as a child and they used essential oils and she got better. The first thing to note is that correlation doesn't equal causation. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with essential oils and they can be beneficial to you, but, and this brings me to my second point, what works for you won't necessarily work for everyone else or even anyone else. I say this, I say this with regard to people in MLMs who have success anyway, as a warning for when they're recruiting people. There is this kind of mindset that is like, well, it happened to this person, so it will happen to me. That isn't how it works. That's not how it works with regards to working from home, and that's not how it works with regards to using essential oils to cure medical conditions. It simply isn't the case, please don't do it. And then she asks this ridiculous and a frankly brave question, because I think the answer most people would have is yes. And so ask yourself for a second, are you and your family any healthier because of traditional medical care. Yes, if I had not had access to doctors and medicine at particular points in my life, I don't think I would be here right now. I currently take an SNRI prescribed by my doctor. I have a family member with a chronic rheumatic disease. I have another with emphysema. And I can honestly think about it and say, yes, traditional medicine has made me and my family heal and become better. That's not to say that the medical system is flawless things can go wrong, doctors can be wrong, sometimes you need a second or third opinion and it can take years to get a proper diagnosis on things that are more rare. It is not about essential oils versus doctors, it's about finding the combination that works for you under the supervision of a fully trained and qualified medical professional who can ensure you're doing so safely. Alison claims that essential oils can cure and fight against cancer, they're effective against viruses and bacteria, basically every irresponsible and wildly untrue claim you can make. She even hits this classic conspiracy theorist line which particularly irritates me, where she thinks that the only reason you can't claim health benefits from essential oils is because of Big Pharma. doTERRA declined to be in this episode, so unfortunately this is their only representation. Obviously this has backfired a little bit for both them and Young Living, so doTERRA released an internal statement to their reps regarding this episode, and it really made me quite cross. They absolutely abdicate all responsibility. Let's just go through it now so that I can rant. Disclaimer, this was an internal communication as I say, so I only had access to it via the reps who shared it on their public pages, so there's always a small potential that something might have been altered. This is purportedly from Sarah Marie Smith, she's listed on LinkedIn as a general manager at doTERRA. Yesterday, August 12th, Netflix released a six episode docuseries, I don't like the way they've written docuseries, Netflix released a six episode docuseries that has essential oils, I don't know why that's in quotation marks, essential oils as its first episode and includes a section about doTERRA and the direct sales industry. When we first learned of the documentary, we were disappointed that essential oils, which are acknowledged as having become mainstream in the episode, were lumped together with the fringe and extreme health practices and products that are featured in subsequent episodes. It is alternative medicine. For as long as there are people, such as the featured representative working for your company, who advocate using essential oils as an alternative to mainstream medicine, it will be alternative medicine and therefore fringe. Sorry, you cannot blame the documentary for that. Now that we have seen the first episode, we have mixed emotions. Me too. Oh, do you know, when I emailed the company in response to this, I should have started my email with, now that I have finished, re <laughs> now that I have finished reading your response, I have mixed emotions. That would have been fucking brilliant. If they reply and I have anything else to ask, that's what I'm gonna do. On the one hand, the episode contains powerful testimonials about the- I'm, I don't know why I keep doing the weird smile, this is how I imagine- <laughs> You know, because you know what the, the really top people in these companies- they are like that, aren't they? Like, hi, this is me on my Facebook Live, just showing off this person who's just made Diamond Ambassador. I'm sorry, I'll try and do my normal face. <laughs> 
On the one hand, the episode contains powerful testimonials about the benefits of essential oils, the gift that essential oils are to several of the people featured, and the use of essential oils in a hospital setting as part of the health facility's integrative care exactly what I said. It does essential oils a service, really. So this is an introduction clearly to the fact that we don't care about how it presents essential oils, we care about how it presents doTERRA. Conversely, the episode attacks doTERRA. That is a peculiar choice of language that I absolutely disagree with. I don't think it attacks anyone. It presents this woman as she is. She was invited to talk about what she does and what she thinks and she did exactly that. I don't know how many times I can say this, the problem is clearly with the company, it's clearly a doTERRA problem. It's either a doTERRA problem because reps are doing this, or these one or two fringe crazy people who are making claims that they shouldn't, there's no way that the company manages them. Both of those options are doTERRA problems. The fact that a documentary filmmaker pointed a camera at those problems is not the fault of the documentary. If the documentary had falsified that and said, oh, this might make doTERRA look bad, and then removed it, that would have been the documentary maker's fault. As it stands, I think doTERRA doesn't want to take any responsibility. Uh, the episode attacks doTERRA as well as the second largest essential oil company. That's Young Living. I don't know why they've declined to say the name. Maybe they're afraid that if their <laughs> reps read this, they'll be like, oh, what's Young living and then get, type it into Google and join that instead. I don't know. It attacks them in predictable and disappointing ways that are typical of decades old MLM bashing. This sensationalist slant did not distinguish doTERRA's unique approach to direct selling that simply does not fit this outdated stereotype. Notice how they skirt around this MLM bashing. They say the documentary doesn't mention their unique approach. Incidentally, every MLM claims to have a unique approach. They don't say that anything brought up by the documentary isn't true, I just think that's really interesting. Regrettably, the episode also focuses on a doTERRA wellness advocate, that's their sales reps, who makes impermissible health claims in direct violation of doTERRA's policies. The wellness advocate has already received notice that she is being investigated for possible disciplinary action possible. So we've already blamed the documentary for focusing on this consultant. Uh, I'm not calling them wellness advocates, especially when they advocate for ingesting essential oils, I'm sorry. We've blamed the documentary for showing that these people exist, and now we're blaming, rightly blaming, this rep for violating doTERRA's policies. I'll be back to this in a second. Pursuant to relatively universal laws and regulations around the world, doTERRA does not claim that its essential oils treat, cure, or prevent any disease, and we require absolute adherence by our wellness advocates to applicable laws and regulations. They require it. But do they? This woman has been extremely successful in doTERRA for a long time, whilst breaking the rules and regulations. So clearly they don't require adherence. They require the breaking of these policies to go unnoticed. There is zero responsibility taken for the fact that representatives break these rules all the time. They're acting like this one woman is the only one and that the documentary unfairly picked her out of everyone. I see this shit all the time. It's clearly the responsibility of doTERRA to ensure that their reps aren't breaking the laws with their claims and that they're not enforcing the rules. They either aren't enforcing their policies or, more likely, they just don't have a way to manage violations like this because, because policing so many consultants worldwide who aren't required to have any qualifications is just a mammoth task that is too big for any company. As I said in my last video, I consider this a reason that MLMs are unethical to run and not an excuse to just not manage anyone's business practices. And doTERRA in their statement makes no acknowledgement of this being an unavoidable side effect of the business they're running. I'm, I'm so cross. <laughs> and then there's a bit of fluff. doTERRA is grateful for its millions of wellness advocates and customers around the world who find the benefits every day from our natural products and who find purpose in educating and empowering people to live happier and more fulfilling lives. What? Ever. And then there's a note at the bottom here that also makes me really angry. The wellness advocate in question is remorseful that she participated in the docuseries and repeatedly expressed sincere regret that she did not contact doTERRA when the filmmakers asked permission to film her. She expressed remorse at having gone on the TV without talking to doTERRA about it first. Not remorse at having endangered people's lives with serious false health claims. Not remorse at having broken laws and regulations that exist to protect consumers. And doTERRA follows this with, accordingly, we ask that you please forward any and all media requests and opportunities to doTERRA corporate communication so that we can help you respond in a timely and appropriate way. 
That is the entire purpose of this statement. This whole thing is 100% about the image of doTERRA. It's a warning to reps not to speak out of turn in the public eye because there will be backlash that makes the company look bad. Never mind that everything the documentary shows about doTERRA and this rep is true. There are representatives making false health claims. It is an MLM recruitment structure. There's no mention of any of that because this is about bad PR. There is nothing in here about how to reduce the number of consultants making false health claims. There is nothing in here about how to protect consumers from being given dangerous advice. It is entirely about how to properly talk to the media without making the company look bad. There is a complete and utter absence of responsibility taken for anything. Because I am the person that I am, I have naturally sent an email to doTERRA compliance with a series of questions and some examples of consultants breaking their so-called requirements, which I shall read to you now. Dear Sir Stroke Madam, I'm writing in response to the statement by Sarah Marie Smith regarding a doTERRA wellness advocate's appearance in a recent documentary series. The statement contains the following quote. Pursuant to relatively universal laws and regulations around the world, doTERRA does not claim that its essential oils treat, cure, or prevent any disease, blah blah blah, we require adherence. That was the part I wanted to know. I was extremely pleased to read that doTERRA is championing the use of aromatherapy in a safe and considerate manner. However, I have seen a great number of consultants fail to follow these guidelines. I wonder if you could enlighten me as to how you monitor adherence to these laws and regulations. If it is a requirement, how do you explain the success of the wellness advocate on the show, despite her violating those terms for so long, as well as the many other advocates who I've seen making illegal false health claims, promoting the ingesting of essential oils and recommending their use on children and animals? If people can be successful doTERRA wellness advocates whilst breaking these terms, can you really say that it is a requirement? Below is a brief list of examples that I've found of consultants making false and dangerous claims that I believe are against doTERRA's terms, as well as legal requirements. Some of these are as recent as yesterday, and some date back seven years. And in all that time they have not been removed by anyone involved in the company, and therefore I must assume that no action has been taken. I would like to ask that A. The people responsible be reprimanded and prevented from doing this again. B. You investigate the reasons behind these consultants breaking the rules whilst going unnoticed by their teammates or managers. And subsequently C. If so many doTERRA consultants are unable to police their own behaviour, the behaviour of those they recruit and those on their teams, does doTERRA not have a responsibility to find alternate means to solve this problem? And then I have the list of examples. So this advocate claims that oils are a natural medicine and good for bronchitis, congestion, flu, fevers and coughs. This advocate claims that this oil fights viral and infectious disease. Holiday joy. It turns out all you need is holiday joy. <laughs> This advocate lists a number of oils to use specifically as a replacement for genuine medicine, and it's called Makeover My Medicine Cabinet, and she's literally listed, this cuts off quite early, but she's listed like every single thing that you could need in your medicine cabinet and said what oil to use instead. This advocate promotes using essential oils on children and claims they will cure a fever. This advocate claims that doTERRA products were a better alternative to getting a flu shot. I'm asthmatic and my lung specialist said I need to receive the flu shot, but last year I said no, and then she talks about how it was her best season ever. She might not specifically be saying, and you should do the same, but she's talking about an experience where a medical professional said you should do this, she didn't, she used this product instead, and now, and she had an even better year. That is blatantly blatantly advocating for the use of essential oils over over her doctor's recommendation. It's I'm I, I lose my mind when I see these things. Here's another advocate recommending elderberry syrup and doTERRA essential oils as an alternative to flu shots. The horror font used to title flu shots is in particularly poor taste. And then she's got again this is all this this again this is a few days ago. All the flu stuff is really recent because it's uh it's coming up on flu season and it's nearly time for everyone to get their shots, I know because my dad is getting his flu shot soon. I guess I should send him this and tell him to just have some elderberry and not bother going down. This advocate recommends this oil as a replacement for times you would normally buy chemist products. Before you dash off to buy products that contain harmful chemicals, think twice my friend. You're not my friend. <laughs> These people have no concept of chemistry, they don't understand what a chemical is. The previous one about flu shots even has this, <laughs> the, they've got this side by side and on the elderberry side it says natural grows outside and on the other side it says made in a lab slash not natural. As though flu shots are made of things that we've conjured out of thin air and essential oils just, we look at a plant and it becomes oil. How do you think we get essential oils from plants? They're fucking made in a lab. <laughs> Last one. This advocate claims that a doTERRA oil diffuser will quote remove harmful ions from your home. I don't know what that means. I don't, I genuinely don't know what a harmful ion is and I don't understand how a diffuser removes it or them, whatever 
they are it is and purify and cleanse the air in your home through the antibacterial properties of essential oils what <laughs> what clean your house do you, do, i mean you clean your house right do you know what's antibacterial antibacterial spray um that you use to clean surfaces tell me you clean your kitchen you don't just stick a diffuser on and hope for the best right I hope you can see from this very small list of examples that there is quite a serious issue within doTERRA of consultants' failure to follow guidelines. The health and safety of consumers is being put in danger, and if the company has no way to deal with or prevent consultants from engaging in such dangerous business practices, this might become an issue for the longevity of the company. Very much looking forward to your reply. Yours faithfully, Emma Thorne. As yet, I am afraid I have received no response, possibly unsurprisingly, from doTERRA. I've still received no response from the body shop on my last two emails, if anybody was wondering. I will, of course, update you if and when that happens. Keep an eye on the pinned comment. And that's all I have to say on the subject. doTERRA's response is predictably underwhelming and takes no responsibility for the genuine flaws in their business model that have been pointed out. As ever, I advise against joining any MLMs, but in particular today I would like to close with the suggestion that if you do plan to use essential oils for anything beyond their intended purpose, please consult your doctor beforehand and take extra care if you're going to do so around children and pets. But be careful when you recommend things. Please do subscribe and click the bell if you would like to be notified when my next video is released. And do feel free to share if you found this particularly informative or entertaining or possibly even both. I had plans for a couple of other videos, so I'm like behind schedule on things I've written because this came up, I read this, and it made me cross, <laughs> clearly. So I just had to talk about it before anything else. The next MLM I plan to talk about, if nothing else crazy pops up in the meantime, is more or less the opposite of the ones that we've investigated so far. It's actually the least dangerous and most responsible MLM I've ever seen. So I'm really interested to see the discussion around that one. Do let me know your thoughts below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.